hi guys welcome or welcome back to this video if this is your first video thank you guys so much for clicking on this video welcome to this channel if you're a returning subscriber welcome back to another video guys thank you guys so much for being here i am so happy right now guys and that's just because we are officially at 10,000 subscribers now guys we would not be able to do this without you guys and i just want to say a huge thank you to all the persons who have subscribed to this channel before and the persons who will be subscribing right now and the persons who will be subscribing in the future guys really appreciate it and we could not do this channel without you you guys are what keep us going and we appreciate each and every one of you guys smash a like on this video drop a comment and let's see how quick we can make it to 20,000 subscribers guys <laughs> So I've been getting a lot of requests to do this video guys and I finally decided to do this video and what am I going to be talking about? I'm going to be talking about the credit system in Canada. How can you build your credit as an immigrant? What's the fastest way to build your credit? How to maintain your credit? The benefits of having good credit and in addition I'm going to be sh um, sharing some saving techniques that can be beneficial especially for new immigrants in Canada. If you guys are new here, my name is Dems. I'm a Jamaican who migrated to Canada back in 2019 with my family as an international student. And I'm living in the beautiful province of Alberta, Grand Prairie to be exact. That's the city where I'm living. My day job, or I like to call it my part-time job, is a senior financial advisor at one of the big five banks here in Canada. That's what I do for a living. So I think I'm very much equipped to share what I do on a daily basis so it can be beneficial to my audience. Again, guys, if this is a content that you guys like, subscribe. If it is that you like the video, like the video. Drop a comment. Let me know if you want to see more of these videos and what do you think about this video. If you guys are thinking of migrating to Canada, one of the first things that you should know is that Canada revolves around credit. The credit system in Canada is the most important system and it can make or it can break you. And a lot of times as new immigrants, we don't understand the benefits, the importance, the relevance of having good credit or how it can negatively affect you having bad credit. Now, I am from Jamaica and when I was leaving Jamaica, credit was important, but it was not as important as in Canada. And that's just because most of the population in Jamaica don't like to borrow. People buy things cash. You try to buy a car cash, buy your phone cash, buy your phone card, stuff like that. But in Canada, everything revolves around credit. Your phone plan is on credit, your car is on credit, <laughs> everything is like a revolving credit. And that's just how the society operates. Oftentimes, when a new immigrant comes to Canada, they end up in a situation where they hurt their credit just because credit is so easily accessible. So having poor financial literacy or our poor understanding of how the credit system work. negatively affects you and can almost set you up for failure in your Canadian journey. Now, if you're moving to Canada, of course, you would have been doing your research already and you would have had a fair bit of understanding of where to go and what not to do. But a lot of persons don't talk about credit and how you can build your credit. And that's what I'm going to be talking about. There are two ways that you can start building your credit immediately as soon as you land in Canada as a new immigrant. One of those ways is to get a, a credit card. A credit card is regarded one of the best way to grow your credit very quickly and to maintain a very high credit score. Now, another way is to get a phone plan. Now, here's the thing with a phone plan, guys. A phone plan doesn't necessarily bill your credit, but it significantly hurts your credit if it is that you allow that phone plan to go into delinquency or if you allow that phone plan to be um, go to collections or if you have a history of late payment on that phone plan. That phone plan can hurt your credit in, in, in so many ways that it takes you years to recover. Now, a credit card is the best way to build your credit. Now, as I said, the phone plan doesn't really build your credit, but it affects your credit. Now, the credit card builds your credit more so because it's what you call revolving. You pay it, you use it. You pay it, you use it. You pay it, you use it. Now, one of the things that a lot of persons don't understand with having a credit card is not just about making your minimum payment. A lot of persons have their credit card, they max out their credit card, and then they maintain their minimum payment and they think that they are putting themselves in a good credit situation. But in truth and in fact, you are really hurting your credit more than building your credit. You want to make sure that you're maintaining 
a, a credit balance or credit limit of at least 75% of your overall credit limit. Simple put, if it is that you have a credit card and your limit is $1,000, you want to make sure that you are not below at least $750 when you make your payment. Now, when you max out your credit card, it reduces or it increases your credit utilization and that brings down your credit score. But when you maintain at least 75% of your limit, it improves your credit score. When you make just your minimum payment, it doesn't hurt your credit, but you're not building credit. So you want to make sure that you're maintaining at least 75% of that overall credit limit in order to reduce your credit utilization, which in turn increase your credit score. Now, one of the things that you also want to do is to know when is your statement date and when is your payment date. Now, these two dates are very important for different reasons. Your statement date, when a statement is generated, you want to make sure that there is a balance on your credit card. You don't want to pay off the credit card in full before your statement is printed. Because if you do that, there's not going to be any credit carried forward on your statement. But you want to be able to show that credit so that there's a credit revolving right there. And then what you want to do is to make sure that you make at least a 75% payment to keep you back within that 75% of the overall credit limit and then that will show that you are managing your credit adequately so what i always say is put all the bills on a credit card every single last one of your bills on a credit card and then after you get a statement pay your credit card what a lot of new immigrants do they get their credit card they use it they pay it tomorrow they get their credit card they use it they pay it the next day no that is not building your credit know when is your statement date and make your payment on or before your payment as a new immigrant, it's so easy to get access to a credit card in Canada. A lot of banks have newcomer programs that make you almost automatically approved for a credit card when you're here as an international student or even as a temporary foreign worker. You literally just walk into a bank with your study permit or work permit along with your ID and you leave out with a credit card approved. That's so easy it is, but do not fall into the trap because if it is that you have poor money management in balancing that credit card, that can set you up for failure in the future. So you want to make sure that you're developing that good spending habits from, a, from even before you get the credit card. Now you heard it here first. The longer you're here in Canada, the more access you'd get to different types of credit. Like for example, a line of credit. A line of credit is a revolving credit similar to a credit card, but at a significantly lower interest rate than a credit card. Now it's very important to note that temporary residents worker, student, oftentimes are not eligible for a line of credit. You have to be a permanent resident in most cases to get access to a line of credit. But temporary residents are, are um, temporary residents are allowed or eligible for a personal loan. Now a personal loan is when you get a large sum of money and you pay it back on a weekly, bi-weekly or monthly basis. Now that doesn't necessarily bill your credit either but if you miss your payment or if you default or if it goes into collection it significantly hurts your credit so you want to get a fair grip of what benefits your credit and what hurts your credit that's what you want to get get to know as soon as possible now let's talk a little bit about savings in canada now if you are a new immigrant one of the first thing you want to start doing is to get into a very good saving habit saving in canada is very important even as a permanent resident but as a temporary resident it's more important because you're gonna need to show funds for your permanent resident application provincial nomination whatever the case may be you're gonna need to show funds in most cases so savings is vital now of course you have your typical savings account that you find at most banks right around the world but here's the thing in canada when you open a regular savings account the interest that you get is very small and it doesn't matter how small it is, it is taxable. Everything revolves around tax in Canada. So your savings account is taxable. So do you really want to save into a savings account? You're not maximizing your interest potential and whatever you earn, it's gonna be taxed. So let's talk about what I recommend. I recommend that one of the plan first accounts you should open, along with your checking account, of course, is what is called a tax-free savings account. Now, your tax-free savings account is really a savings account that gives you the op opportunity to invest in different investment vehicles, generate more interest, and whatever interest you earn within that account is non-taxable. 
you don't pay tax on that interest it doesn't matter if you make a million dollar interest now within that tax-free savings account you can open a gic gic stands for guaranteed investment certificate now a gic is similar to what we call a fixed deposit in jamaica depends on the term of the gic determines the interest that you make two different types of gic you have redeemable gic and you have non-redeemable GIC. Simple put, GIC that you can touch and GIC that you can't touch. Now, the ones that you can't touch, of course, gives you more interest than the one that you can touch. Now, that is within the TFSA. Another investment vehicle, guys, is what is called mutual funds. Mutual funds is when the bank take your money, invest it in different um, options, stocks, securities, other money market securities in order to generate more interest. But the thing with mutual funds is, it's not guaranteed, right? And you have what is also called self-directing investment, where you do it yourself. So those are some of the vehicles that is within the TFSA that is really guaranteed to get more interest. And whatever interest you make within the TFSA is non-taxable. But here's a the catch. There's a maximum contribution limit that you can make within the TFSA per year. Now for this year, 2023, 2023 the limit is $6,500 per person. It's the same for everyone. Now, every year, the limit is different. Last year, for example, the limit was 6,000. The year before, the limit was 5,500. At one point in time, the limit was 10,000. It all depends on the economy. It all depends on CRA. It all depends on the Bank of Canada. And all number of factors determines what's the contribution limit to your TFSA. Now, if it is that you are in Canada and you have never owned a TFSA before, then you have what is called an accumulated contribution limit. For every year that you don't contribute, that you're eligible to contribute, but you don't contribute, it rolls over into the other year. So you might have 6,000 plus 6,500 plus 5,500, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So you want to know your contribution limit, which is usually on a notice of assessment, the last page when you file the taxes, right? That is an account that I strongly recommend any new immigrant to open. And the thing with this is, most banks have what is called pre-authorized contribution where you can choose to make a specific amount go to that account every time you get paid without you even seeing it so you can say hey 25 dollars every time i get paid 50 dollars every time i get paid just goes directly into that account you can pop it into a mutual funds or you can pop it into a gic once it reaches the minimum deposit and then you are good to go you're generating that interest and you're not even seeing the money and you're not paying taxes on it. Thank me later for that advice. Now, the other saving strategy that I um, encourage any new immigrant to open is what is called a RRSP, Registered Retirement Savings Plan. Now, RRSP is really geared to retirement. That's what it's for. But the thing is, it has a significant benefit that I'm gonna share that you guys are gonna find very interesting. Now, remember I spoke about taxes in Canada. Taxes in Canada can be very, very expensive. So if you want to reduce the amount of tax you pay, opening an RRSP is the best option. Now, simple put, whatever amount you're eligible to contribute into RRSP, that you actually contribute into the RRSP is subtracted off your total taxable income. Now, for example, if you make $100,000 per year and you're eligible to contribute $20,000 to your RRSP, and you contribute the $20,000, it simply means that you only pay taxes for $80,000 because the $20,000 that, that you contribute to your IRSP is not taxable. It comes off your overall taxable income, but you can only get that money under two circumstances for retirement or if it is that you're going to be purchasing your first home, which is your own, first home by a plan, but you have to pay it back after 15 years otherwise it become taxable now the thing is guys if you want the money out your rrsp you're following our times difficult situations you want this money you can get it but you're gonna pay tax for it so the government is gonna say that hey we gave you this tax credit you're gonna get it taxed for this money as long as you're taking it out for a purpose outside of retirement are purchasing your first home now i'm not going to confuse you guys with any other significant saving strategy but there are a few other ones but i want you guys to get familiar with your rrsp 
and your TFSA because those two plans are plans that you guys should be talking to your bank about and getting those plans open as soon as, as soon as, as soon as you become eligible. Get a credit card as soon as you reach into the bank. So when you're opening your checking account, you're applying for a credit card at the same time. It's very important, guys, for you guys to do this because it will benefit you significantly in the future. Anyways, guys, that's my two cents. If you like this video, like this video. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't subscribed already. Really appreciate you guys. Thank you guys so much for getting us over 10,000 subscribers. On route to 20,000 subscribers, if you haven't subscribed already, what are you waiting on? See you guys in the next video.